Welcome to the Peer Exchange, targeting metastatic colorectal cancer, current and emerging therapies. My name is John Marshall, and I'm a professor and chief of the Division of Hematology Oncology at Georgetown University Hospital, as well as the associate director and clinical researcher at the Lombardi Comprehensive Cancer Center. Today, I'm joined by Fadi Bratai. He's the medical oncologist and the director of the phase one translational oncology program and GI malignancies research, um, and a member of the Comprehensive Cancer Centers of Nevada, Las Vegas. Welcome, Fadi. Thank you. Secondly, uh, Dr. Axel Grothy, professor of oncology and consultant in the division of medical oncology in the Department of Oncology, Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota. Axel, welcome. Hi, hey, John. Right next to me, Tony Saab, good friend, section chief, GI oncology, chair of GI disease research group, associate professor of medicine and pharmacology at The Ohio State University, James Cancer Hospital in Columbus, Ohio. Welcome. Thank you. And finally, but not least, Dr. Alan Vanuk, the Madden Family Distinguished Professor of Medical Oncology and Translational Research, University of California, San Francisco, San Francisco, California. Alan, welcome. Thank you, John. So recent advances in the treatment of metastatic colorectal cancer have led to significant improvements in overall survival from 12 months with fluorouracil monotherapy to approximately two years. This is partly due to the addition of arenatecan and oxaliplatin, but is also a result of the use of monoclonal antibodies against the epidermal growth factor, EGFR, and anti-angiogenic drugs such as bevacizumab. Notably, there are observed molecular differences between colorectal tumors, which can affect both prognosis and response to treatment. Personalized medicine focuses on tailoring treatment according to individual patient characteristics such as KRAS mutations to guide treatment decisions with the use of anti-EGFR monoclonal antibodies and is now part of routine clinical practice. In today's discussion, current and emerging treatment options are reviewed for both potentially resectable frontline and unresectable relapsed refractory metastatic colorectal cancer along with the role of biomarkers in patient selection for treatment with currently approved therapies and drugs being evaluated in clinical trials. The expert panel will also discuss some of the observed cutaneous toxicities associated with agents used to treat metastatic colorectal cancer and routine procedures for referral to dermatologists. All right, guys, let's get going. We're going to start with a discussion around frontline metastatic disease. There are a series of new trials that have emerged lately uh, uh, that have helped us, I think, tailor what we do. It's not really bringing a bunch of new drugs to the table, although a couple exceptions there, too, some new medicines. But I think of it as sort of a better way to play the chess game, some refinement on um, how we move the parts on the, on the board to uh, offer our patients the best uh, treatment choices with metastatic colon. And, and Axel, we're going to start with you. There's a study called the TRIBE study, which is sort of kitchen sink. <laughs> I always remember back, um, you know, pro may cytobom used to be the regimen of choice for uh, lymphoma. lymphomas. Um, now we're kind of getting there with full Fox, Erie, Bev. Tell us about the TRIBE study. Yeah, and the other analogy you already made is kind of the Lego blocks, you know, Lego blocks putting little pieces on top of each other, combining all three chemotherapy drugs that we have come to use, five of you, oxaplatin, renotecan. And you know, the Italian investigators that also spearheaded the TRIBE trial had pioneered the Folfoxiri kind of chemotherapy combination. It's quite successful in, uh, quite successful in phase three trials before higher response rate, and we might actually utilize this Folfoxiri by itself in, in patients with liver, resectable liver metastasis. Now, the phase three trial presented at ASCO 2013 compared Folfox Erie Bevacizumab to Folfiri Bevacizumab, which I think is a more standard way of utilizing first-line therapy. Primary endpoint was progression-free survival. We can debate whether this is the right primary endpoint. About 500 patients were randomized. Um, so first of all, toxicity issues were, of course, kind of discussed. Uh, does the, this kitchen sink approach, three drugs plus bevacizumab, lead to higher, uh, significantly higher uh, side effects? Yes, there are more side effects, diarrhea, stomatitis, neutropenia, but not febrile neutropenia. So overall, in terms of AEs and whatever they looked at, um, it is tolerable. Now, how efficacious is it? Uh, first of all, we'd expect higher response rate. Yes, 65 versus um, 53%, so there is more response. 
um, progression-free survival was prolonged by with a hazard ratio of about 0.75, so 25% reduction of progression events, leading to a progression-free survival of about 12 months for the full Fox Siri Bev study uh, study group. And actually, what I find most impressive is that this apparently select group of patients, because who really tolerates fall fox mm. series bevis. Who do you who would you include in this study? Uh, this this select patient population at least in the experimental arm had a median survival of 31 months. Mm. That's actually the first time we've seen in a phase three trial a study arm going beyond 30 months. We have talked about this advances, you know, integrating new drugs into sequ sequential approaches, but here we have a treatment arm 31 months, not statistically significant in terms of overall survival, it trended toward it, median difference of about five, five and a half months. Um, but you know, they, they're going to analyze it further and further and the trend actually looks toward overall survival benefit. So Alan, I'm picking on you right off the bat. Why, why isn't this the standard of care? Well, I think uh, there's a certain, uh, a couple of key issues. One, of course, when you see a patient and you prescribe their first line therapy, they want to know what you're going to do next. Mm -hmm. And here you've played all your cards right off the bat. So unless you see a dramatic benefit, uh, you're not inclined to do it. You're going to buy toxicity, and some of that toxicity may be interfere with quality of life. I think uh, also now perhaps we know that you can use a biologic with it, so this may get more play. Uh, but I, I think in general, if you uh, look back, we look at the FOCUS trial from the UK where you could sequence singlets, single mm -hmm. therapies, and do as well as you did with doublets. Uh, maybe you can still do that. Uh, I, I think it is true that there's a 31-month survival, but I think there are other factors that come into this, more use of other modalities, other therapies that may make a difference as well. But uh, I think in general, most people are hesitant mostly because of the fear of using all their guns right at the bat. And maybe just for our audience, um, we could do a little dosing. So, I mean, it's, I, we've, I've given this recipe now to a patient or two. Anybody want to comment on how they handle the dosing uh, on it? I mean, we, we've gotten more experience with fulfirinox in pancreas cancer. I think there's one of the standard first-line therapies. And actually, fulfirinox, when you look at the actual irinotecan dose, is higher dose, 180 milligrams every two per meter squared every two weeks. Fall Fox Erie is only 165 milligrams, so it's not a full kind of amalgam between Fall Fox and Fall Fury. Um, to Alan's point, I mean, I completely agree. This is one of those things. If you have a patient progress on Fall Fox Erie, bevacizumab, KRAS mutant tumors, what do you do in second line therapy? Now, in the study, actually, they limited the duration of this combination phase to 12 cycles, meaning six months. So a lot of patients actually kind of got off the combination regimen. They, they cruise patients on fluoropyrimidine and bevacizumab. And so you could reintroduce renotegan oxapla. And I think this theme of induction maintenance therapy, reintroduction of, let's say, more, com more active combination agents, is something we'll talk about later, um, which so can apply to this Fox-Erie bevacizumab treatment too.